hello students welcome back to your bio class so today we are dealing with the um, third chapter of plant physiology which is photosynthesis okay now uh, we are very familiar with this concept already like jab se hum chote se tab se padhte aa rahe ki photosynthesis kya hota hai uh, that is the synthesis of food or glucose or starch from co2 and h2 in the presence of क्लोरोफिन एंड सनलाइट लेकिन हमको इस डेफिनेशन तक ही अब तक सिर्फ पता था पर इस चैप्टर में हम कुछ डिटेल्स पढ़ेंगे फोटोसिंथिस को लेकर ठीक है तो फोटोसिंथिस का सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट होता है क्या क्लोरोफिन ना वेर डू वी फाइंड दिस क्लोरोफिन ना क्लोरोफिन इज अ ग्रीन कलर पिगमेंट विच इज फाउंड इन द सेल ऑर्गेमेंट नेम इज क्लोरोप्लास्ट क्लोरोप्लास्ट कहाँ मिलता है क्लोरोप्लास्ट इज जनरली फाउंड इन द स्पॉन्जी मेस्ट्रल सेल्स ऑफ द लीव्स एंड सम ग्रीन पार्ट्स ऑफ द स्टेट्स ओके नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ क्लोरोप्लास्ट नाउ क्लोरोप्लास्ट फर्स्ट कंटेन्स अ जेल लाइक सेमी लिक्विड सब्सटेंस इनसाइड इट व्हिच इज नोन एज द स्ट्रोमा ओके देन इट कंटेन्स सम stacks called or disc like shapes for the thylakoids now these thylakoids in a group or in a pile together is known as a grana okay and as you can see here there are some connecting ridges between these thylakoids these are known as the fret okay what is it called fret now uh, we need to know that uh, what does the chlorophyll contains okay now the pigment chlorophyll contains compound uh, elements like carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and magnesium okay now chlorophyll are of two types that is type a which is chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b now you need to you need to know that in the visible spectrum chlorophyll absorbs both the blue light and the red light okay and the green light in between is reflected by the chlorophyll and due to that reflection the chlor the pigment chlorophyll seems to be green okay now uh, we have already uh, discussed about the regulation of the stomatal opening in the previous chapters okay but we haven't learned that how that cards are open and closes we have discussed that in the morning time the plants open the cards in order to take in co2 and then closes the cards when the condition is flaccid in the night time okay but how does that turgidity and flaccidity is controlled by the plant that is divided into two theories okay one which is the most recent one that is the potassium or the k plus ion concentration theory and another one which is the older version is the sugar concentration theory okay now let us discuss about these two theories now in k plus ion concentration theory it deals with the k plus ion gradient now how is that gradient built now we know that due to photosynthesis huge amount of atp is released by the plant okay atp that is adenosine triphosphate or it is the form of energy produced by the plants okay? now that atp does pumps the k plus ions from the cell sap into the guard cells okay they accumulate all the potassium ions from the cell sap and pumps into the guard cells okay now as a result the guard cells obviously become turgid and due to that turgidity it blows up or it opens the stomatal opening thus the transpiration occurs and the co2 intake is continued okay now after the co2 is taken in and after few some time the situation inside the guard cells become hypertonic right and the outside that is the sponge muscle cells in the other epidermal areas those become hypotonic and now we know 
already know that when there is a situation of hypertonic and hypertonic solution, there is always osmosis, right? So, when the situations become excessively hypertonic inside the guard cells and excessively hypotonic outside of the guard cells, that is around the areas around the guard cells, the potassium ions are pumped back into the spongiosable cells and other cells of the leaf, right? As a result, the guard cells become flaccid and closes. Got it? Clearly understood? Now, this was just a simple concept of K plus ion concentration theory, which is based on the K plus gradient. Okay. Now, second one deals with the sugar concentration. The sugar concentration, obviously, that is not the sugar that we eat. That deals with the glucose produced by the plant during photosynthesis. As we all know fr from this equation also that uh, the photos in during photosynthesis glucose is being synthesized. Now that glucose makes the solution of the leaf uh, make the solution of the leaf hypertonic, right? That is why the guard cells cease to open and as a result transpiration also occurs. Now we know that photosynthesis mostly occurs during the day and stops during the night. Right? Now after the hypotonic situation inside the guard cell has persisted for a long time, the region surrounding the guard cells, that is the spongy muscle cells and the epidermal cells become hypotonic. Right? Then again osmosis, osmosis occurs in the same way. The hypotonic solution tends to equalize the hypotonic solution outside the guard cell. As a result, the glucose which was then making the guard cell turgid and opening it tends to rush out of the hypertonic solution towards the hypotonic solution. That is, the glucose rich cell sap tends to move out of the guard cells to the other areas of the leaf. As a result, the guard cells again become flaccid and it closes and thus the transpiration also stops. Okay. Now these are the two theories related to the regulation of stomatal opening. Now we know that transpiration and photosynthesis is always interrelated. If there is no transpiration, there will be no photosynthesis. If there is no photosynthesis, then there will obviously be no transpiration. Got it? Right. Now, two things you need to remember that the inner walls of the guard cells are thick while the outer walls are thin. Keep an eye. Now, we have learned that glucose is produced as a result of photosynthesis. But what are the processes involved inside it? What is the mechanism of that photosynthesis, right? We'll discuss about that. But before jumping into that, uh, know one thing that excess sunlight will always destroy food. Since excess sunlight is not good for So, chlorophyll is also good for food. So, now let us discuss about the processes. Now, we know that the mesophyll cells contains the chlorophyll and those captures the sunlight and then the photosynthesis continues to the photosynthesis is divided into two phases, one being the light phase, that is the light dependent phase or we can also call it the photochemical phase, second phase being the dark phase. Now dark phase doesn't mean that it only happens during night time during the dark, it means that this phase is not dependent on the light. So it's better to say it as light independent phase. Okay. Now let us first discuss about the light dependent phase. Okay. Now what happens in the light dependent phase is that at first you need to know that it takes place in the thylakoids of the chloroplast. Okay. Now this light phase is divided into two steps. In step one there is the activation of chlorophyll by absorbing photon. Okay, now what is photon? In physics, you have learned that photon is the smallest unit of light. In 
the next step the water which is 2H2O is split into H plus ions and electrons okay and O2 in the presence of the four photons that was previously taken up by the chloride. Now these splitting of water by light that is the photons is also known as photolysis. And what is photolysis? Photolysis is the splitting of water molecules into its constituent elements and electrons in the presence of light. Okay. Next, what is the result of these steps? The result is that the H plus ion that was produced due to the photolysis is taken up by NADP which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate in the presence of electrons and enzymes and it creates NADPH. Okay, now what is the function of NADPH that we will learn in the higher classes. Second, what happens? The oxygen that was that we got in the photolysis reaction will be converted into molecular oxygen and given out in the atmosphere. Next what happens is that the electrons produced in the photolysis will be used by the ADP which is adenosine phosphate and it will get attached with the inorganic phosphate in order to create more ADP which is adenosine triphosphate. Now this reaction of conversion of ADP attaching with the inorganic phosphate in order to form ATP is also known as photophosphorylation. Photophosphorylation. Okay. Now this is all about the light dependent phase. Now let us move on to the dark phase or the light independent phase. Now what happened in the light independent phase is that here the glucose is converted into starch and other chemicals for the uses of the plants. Now uh, this conversion of glucose to starch is known as polymerization. Okay. Now the glucose can also be converted into sucrose and oil in order to specific purposes used by the plants. Now you need to remember is that the dark phase or the light independent phase occurs in the stroma. So the light dependent phase occurs in the thylakoids and the light independent phase occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. Got it? Now discuss the adaptations of the leaves for photosynthesis. Okay. Now first being the large surface area. Large surface area equals to more absorption of sunlight, which is equal to more photosynthesis. Next comes leaf arrangement. The leaves of the plants are arranged in such a way that they absorb maximum sunlight, which leads to better photosynthesis. Next comes presence of cuticle and the upper abdomen. Okay. Cuticle is that the upper wax layer of the plant which makes it waterproof and hence suitable for photosynthesis. Next comes the numerous stomata. Huge number of stomata equals to greater of absorption of sunlight and CO2 equal to greater photosynthesis. Next is thin leaves. More thin the leaves, more easier will be the transport of the products formed in the photosynthesis, hence faster photosynthesis. Next comes the chloroplast. Now you see the chloroplast are the units of photosynthesis. So the presence of chloroplast in the leaves helps in photosynthesis. Next are the extensive vein system. Extensive vein system helps in better and proper transportations of the products formed in photosynthesis to continue with another set of photosynthesis. Okay? Now, uh, what are the end products of photosynthesis? 
we all know that those are glucose, water and oxygen. Now the glucose formed uh, as a result of the photosynthesis is sometimes used by the plant immediately or it is stored as insoluble starch which can also be converted into fructose and which will help in other functions in the plants. The glucose formed in the leaves is also translocated to other parts of the plants through phloem in order to make the plant healthier and support them with life. Okay. Next comes water. Now the water produced in the photosynthesis is reused again by another cycle of photosynthesis. Next comes oxygen. Now we all know that the oxygen released in photosynthesis is converted into molecular oxygen which is released by the plant in the outer atmosphere and obviously it doesn't go to waste. We all take up oxygen in order to survive. Now let us move on to the factors affecting the photosynthesis. Okay. Now the external factors are the light intensity, the CO2 concentration. Now you might all think that since uh, photosynthesis need light then with the increase in the intensity of the light photosynthesis rate will always increase but no the photosynthesis rate along with the light intensity increase will always be limited okay the photosynthesis will increase with the increase in light intensity up maybe up to a certain level okay Next comes the CO2 concentration. Now CO2 concentration, um, although the photosynthesis needs carbon dioxide for the preparation of glucose, excess CO2 concentration will also not help in photosynthesis. Okay? The, if the CO2 level moves up to 0.02%, then the photosynthesis will stop at a certain level then again it might increase up to 0.05 percent then it will stop okay so the light intensity and the co2 concentration as a factor for photosynthesis goes hand in hand both excessive light intensity and co2 concentration cannot mean that the photosynthesis rate will increase okay it is only up to a certain limit next comes temperature now obviously the temp uh, with the increase in temperature the photosynthesis rate will increase but only up to a certain level. The optimum temperature for photosynthesis is 35 degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises more than that it will destroy all the other cell organelles and it will cause the closure of the guard cells hence it will stop the photosynthesis. Next comes the water content. What happens is that if there is scarcity of water due to the less absorption of water by the roots, then also the photosynthesis will stop since H2O or water is a major component that is required for the reaction of photosynthesis. So less water obviously means less photosynthesis or less food produced by the plant. Okay. Now what are the internal factors? The internal factors are the presence of chlorophyll. We have already discussed about the function of chlorophyll which is related with photosynthesis. Next comes the protoplasm. If the protoplasm of the cell of the guard cell dries up then obviously the photosynthesis will not be able to take place since the guard cell will close. Also the accumulation of carbohydrate in the guard cells and other adjoining areas will stop the photosynthesis since there will be no space for the production of glucose. Next comes the structure of leaf. The structure of leaf is uh, the leaf is arranged in such a manner that it will properly receive the sunlight and CO2 so that it will result in better photosynthesis. Okay. Now these are the few factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. Next, we will move on with some experiments related with photosynthesis. 
Now, before moving on with the experiments, you need to know about two things that is the starch test and destarch. Now, we know that photosynthesis uh, produces glucose and that glucose is stored as starch in the leaves. Now, what, what is starch test? What happens there is that first a leaf is taken and then boiled in order, boiled in water in order to remove the chlorophyll. Okay. Next, that boiled leaf is taken out of the water and put in warm water okay, in order to soften the leaf. Then that leaf is put outside in the sunlight for few hours in order to uh, in order for the photosynthesis to occur. Okay. Then iodine solution is poured on that leaf. Okay. What happens is that if the starch is present it turns blue black in color if there will be no starch then it will turn brown in color okay and what is destarching destarching is keeping the leaf a starchified leaf in dark for suppose 24 hours to 48 hours so that there will be no photosynthesis hence no starch will be present in the leaf okay now let us move on with the experiment. So first experiment deals with the presence of chlorophyll for photosynthesis or that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis, right? Now what happens in this experiment is that we have taken two leaves which are the variegated leaf. Now what are variegated leaves? Variegated leaves are the leaves where few parts of them are green and few parts are non-green. Suppose yellowish okay we can find those leaves in plants like coleus okay now what happens is that we take that variegated leaf and perform the starch test right then after performing the starch test that is by boiling it and then putting it out in the sunlight okay we pour the iodine solution okay now after pouring that iodine solution we can see that only the green part of that plant becomes blue black in color while the other parts where it was yellow it becomes brown in color why now we know that the green color of the plant comes from the pigment chlorophyll therefore it indicates that only the green parts contain chlorophyll and that chlorophyll is responsible for the production of starch and that is why only the green part turns blue and black in color while the other parts remains brown since there is no chlorophyll hence no photosynthesis okay clear good next we are moving on with the second experiment which is dealing with the requirement of sunlight for the process of photosynthesis okay now what happens is that we take a plant and we take a leaf and then cover it with a black sheet of paper and then perform the starch test that is by boiling and then putting it out in the sunlight right then we pour the iodine solution on top of that while keeping intact that black paper then after removing that black paper, we noticed that only the uh, part which was not covered by the black paper turns blue and black, while the part which was covered with that black paper turns brown. That's why it means that which part was covered with the paper, it didn't receive any sunlight, right? And that is why it couldn't produce any starch. As a result, the starch test of that part was negative okay good. now in the third experiment it deals with the requirement of co2 or carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis what happens there is that the half of the leaf is introduced inside a beaker inside a beaker or a closed type container where it contains kOH which is potassium hydroxide now remember that potassium hydroxide absorbs CO2 or carbon dioxide. Then it is as usual kept in the sunlight and the starch test is done. After the starch test we will see that the part which was outside the 
container which to the which to, which contains sewage becomes blue and black while the part which was put inside the container becomes brown which means co2 was not present in that part of the plant which was put inside the container and hence it doesn't gives the starch test that is why we can say that co2 is required for the photosynthesis to occur okay good now in the sec in the fourth experiment here what we do is that we check if oxygen is really produced as a end product of photosynthesis or not what happens is that a water plant is kept in a beaker and then covered by a funnel now the neck of now the stem of the funnel is covered with a test tube filled with water okay after few hours keeping all the whole setup in the sunlight we will see that bubbles are formed in the test tube which indicates that some sort of gas is produced right after testing it by burning we can see a glowing splinter which indicates the presence of o2 right thus we can say that the bubble is formed was formed by the photosynthesis which gives the end product o2 which is clearly tested in the lab and verified that it is indeed oxygen okay now with this we end all the experiments related with the photosynthesis of तो अब फोटोसिंथेसिस के कुछ इम्पोर्टेंस क्या होता है एक तो फूड प्रोवाइड करता है और सेकंड जो ऑक्सीजन प्रोवाइड करता है ऑक्सीजन के बारे में तो पता ही है कि वी ऑल टेक अप ऑक्सीजन इन ऑर्डर टू सर्वाइव और फूड भी हमारे सर्वाइवल के लिए ज़रूरत होता है क्योंकि द फूड प्रोवाइडेड बाई द प्लांट्स फोटोसिंथिस इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड थ्रू आउट द फूड चेन लाइक फ्रॉम प्लांट्स प्लांट्स ऑक्सीजन बाई द इंसेक्ट्स Insects are eaten by the frog. The frog is eaten by the snake, and the snake is eaten by a bee. In this way, the food chain continues. And at the beginning of that, it is always the food provided by the plant directly or indirectly. Okay. And last but not the least, let us discuss about the carbon cycle. Okay. Now, carbon cycle means it deals with the transference of CO2 throughout the food chain or throughout the biosphere. Okay. Now what happens here is that CO2 present in the atmosphere is taken up by the plants through photosynthesis or the producers by photosynthesis. Then the consumers consumes the producers directly or indirectly and those consumers are eaten by the decomposers. When they die, right? Then these consumers and decomposers gives back or releases CO two back in the atmosphere through suppose decay, respiration, and combustion, right? Next, the consumers which turns into fossils by fossilization is converted into fossil fuels, right? Now, fossil fuels con consist of the coal, oil, gas, limestone, and these fossil fuel. Again, releases CO two back to the atmosphere by heating or combustion. Thus, what we can notice here is CO two is only absorbed by the plants, whereas it is released by every other single individual present in the environment into the atmosphere. अगर plants नहीं होगा environment में तो CO two एब्जॉर्ब करने के लिए कोई भी नहीं होगा जिसकी वजह से सी ओ का लेवल इतना बढ़ जाएगा कि पूरा एनवायरनमेंट टॉक्सिक हो जाएगा जिसकी वजह से इट कैन लीड टू डेथ ऑफ एवरी सिंगल इंडिविजुअल ऑन द प्लानट दस इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू प्लांट ट्रीज इन ऑर्डर टू बैलेंस द कार्बन साइकिल इन और इन ऑर्डर टू सेव द नेचर विच इज इंडली सेविंग आवर सेल्स राइट स्टूडेंट्स राइट नाउ विद दिस डिस्कशन ऑफ द कार्बन साइकिल वी इन दिस चैप्टर ऑफ फोटोसिंथिस होप यू हैव क्लियरली अंडरस्टूड द कॉन्सेप्ट ओके थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग